Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Tidbits. My name is Christina Koopman, and as always, thank you for joining me. As the general public, we tend to think of artists in terms of one individual painting. Maybe it's their most famous work or their distinct style. And then in our brains, we keep them that way. Our brains catalog an artist based on their most famous work, or maybe the first piece of theirs we ever saw. And then it never really evolves from there, it just stays that way. Art is anything but static, however. Styles change, new medias develop, and artists evolve. It's a mistake to put artists in a box based on one work. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about how political climate, physical and mental health, and social isolation led artist Francisco Goya from this style all the way to this. Today's episode is about the power of art to reflect personal circumstance and art as a tool of emotional expression and therapy. Let's take a deeper look. Francisco José de Goya, born 1746, is regarded as the most important Spanish artist of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Over the course of his long career, Goya moved from jolly and light-hearted to deeply pessimistic and searching in his paintings, drawings, etchings, and frescoes. Starting in the 1750s, King Charles III ruled Spain as an enlightened monarch who was sympathetic to change, employing ministers who supported radical economic, industrial, and agricultural reform. Goya came to artistic maturity during this Age of Enlightenment, the so-called Golden Age of Spanish art. As his skill and fame grew, Goya continued to move up in circles of patronage. He received more and more commissions from the aristocracy and moving up into the royals themselves. The Condesa de Altamira and her daughter shows his skill at capturing the sensitivity of the sitters and his mastery of a painterly technique, which portrays in broad brushstrokes the brilliance of fine clothing and other accoutrements of wealth. In 1789, at the age of 40, Goya was appointed official court painter to King Charles IV. He painted portraits of the king and the queen, the Spanish prime minister, and many other nobles. These portraits are notable, however, for their disinclination to flatter. His Charles IV of Spain and his family is an especially brutal assessment of a royal family. Charles IV's reign was marked by corruption, scandal, and controversy. You can note the artist put himself into the background, bearing witness to this monarchy and its many failures. As the official court painter, he could never come out and say his opinions directly, but he often made them known through his art, nevertheless. Sometime between late 1792 and early 1793, a severe and undiagnosed illness left Goya completely deaf. He became withdrawn and introspective, while the direction and tone of his work changed. He began the series of aqua-tinted etchings, published in 1799 as the Caprichos, completed in parallel with the more official commissions of portraits and religious paintings. These works appear to reflect a bleak outlook on personal, social, and political events, in contrast with his successful social climbing as a royal painter. The enlightened Spanish monarchy came to an end when Napoleon's armies invaded Spain in 1808. The brutal incursion, which included mass executions of Spanish citizens who rose up in opposition to the invasion, culminated in French occupation and the installation of Napoleon's brother, Joseph Bonaparte, on the Spanish throne. Although repulsed by French atrocities, Goya pledged allegiance to Bonaparte for his own safety and painted members of the French regime while in Madrid. After a long period of tumultuous violence, Spanish monarchy was restored with Napoleon's fall in 1814. But the new king, Ferdinand VII, did not share the enlightened views of his predecessors. He revoked the constitution, reinstated the Spanish Inquisition, and declared himself absolute monarch. Not long afterward, he launched a new reign of terror. 
When questioned about his loyalty to the French occupiers, Goya demonstrated his allegiance to Spain by commemorating the uprising against the French regime in two now-famous paintings, the 2nd of May, 1808, and the 3rd of May, 1808. In the first, Goya depicts a brutal scene in Madrid's city center, the Puerta del Sol, where Spaniards fought the French-led soldiers on horseback. The second work illustrates the execution of captured Spaniards on the Principe Peo, a hill just outside Madrid. During this period of his life, we see a wide variety of paintings concerned with insanity, mental asylums, witches, fantastical creatures, and religious and political corruption, all of which suggest that he feared for both his country's fate and his own mental and physical health. Art historians have noted Goya's singular ability to express his personal demons as horrific and fantastic imagery that speaks universally and allows his audience to find its own catharsis in the dark imagery. Goya continued his account of the atrocities of war in a series of 85 prints called The Disasters of War. Executed from 1810 to 1820, the series depicts the travesties witnessed during Spain's struggle for independence from France. Unlike the Caprichos, this series was never published during Goya's lifetime. Records of Goya's later life are relatively scant, and ever politically aware, he suppressed a number of his works from this period, working instead in private. Goya was tormented by a dread of old age and a fear of madness, the latter possibly from anxiety caused from an undiagnosed illness that left him deaf from the early 1790s. Goya had been a successful and royally placed artist, but withdrew from public life during his final years, with no royal commissions to be found in the court of Ferdinand. From the late 1810s, he lived in near solitude outside Madrid in a farmhouse converted into a studio. The house had become known as La Quinta del Sordo, the house of the deaf man. At the age of 75, alone and in mental and physical despair, he completed the work on his 14 black paintings, all of which were executed in oil directly onto the plaster walls of his house. Goya did not intend for these paintings to be exhibited, did not write of them, and likely never spoke of them. Goya eventually abandoned Spain in 1824 to retire in further solitude following a stroke which left him paralyzed on his right side and suffering failing eyesight and poor access to painting materials he died and was buried on april 16 1828 age 82 his body was later reinterred in madrid famously the skull was missing a detail the spanish consul immediately not communicated to his superiors in madrid who wrote back quote, "send goya with or without head" How does a lifetime of witnessing political intrigue and corruption, civil unrest, violence, physical and mental illness, and the terrifying inevitability of old age impact art? Through his work, we see how these factors impacted Goya. He dealt with the horrors of war and illness in the only way he knew how, by making art about them. Much of it was never meant to be seen by anyone else painted literally onto the walls of his own home. What conclusions can we, or should we, draw about his life based on artwork he never meant anyone to see? Christina here. I know this video is a little different because I didn't focus on one specific work of art, but I think it's important to see how your lived experiences can impact the artwork that you make. If you'd like me to cover a specific painting you saw in this video, leave a comment below and I'd be happy to include it in a future video. As always, thank you so much for watching.